Hello Year 9 and welcome to another edition of Remote Learning and Physics. As always, let's begin with the Trevo practice. Number one, what is a permanent magnet? Please define it. Number two, what is the unit of density? Number three, name a gas test for carbon dioxide. And number four, what would you find in the nucleus of an atom? Have a go, pause the video while you do, and then play when you want to hear the answers. Answering the questions, number one, a permanent magnet is one which produces its own magnetic field. Number two, the unit of density is the kilogram per meter cubed. For carbon dioxide, it will turn lime water milky or cloudy. And the nucleus of an atom contains both protons and neutrons. In today's lesson, we're going to take a look at the magnetic field around a bar magnet, recalling the shape, the direction, discussing the strength, so we can describe and draw the shape and direction of said field, and then looking at how the behaviour of a plotting compass, magnetic compass, relates to the Earth's own magnetic field. For reference, here's the uh, PLC section from lesson nine. The first factor we look at today is the magnetic field strength. This depends on the distance from the magnet, as magnetism is a non-contact force. The field is also strongest at the poles of the magnet. Note that in diagrams of magnetic fields, we use the distance between the field lines drawn on the diagram as a relative indication of strength. So lines are furthest apart, far away from the magnet, but much closer, uh, close to the magnet. And again, at the poles, the field lines are closest of all, linking to the relative strength. For field direction, this is defined as the direction of the force that would act on another North Pole placed at that point. So placing a North Pole here, we would receive a push to the left, One here would be pulled towards that south pole. And one down at the bottom would be pushed to the right. So reminding ourselves the definition of a field, that is the area or space around magnet where magnetic forces work, where they can attract or repel When drawing magnetic field lines, we must remember that they always go from a north seeking pole to a south seeking pole. And notice that when field lines stop, that's because they've gone off the edge of our diagram. Moving on to magnetic compasses now. A magnetic compass contains a small bar magnet, and as such, it is affected by magnetic fields. So when I place a bar magnet close to the compass, I can make the compass needle uh, be attracted or repelled depending on which magnetic pole is placed close to it. I can completely change the direction of the compass so that it no longer tracks the Earth's magnetic field. We may use magnetic compasses to plot the shape and direction of the field around a bar magnet, as shown in this diagram. The method to plot the field direction and shape is relatively straightforward. Simply take a plotting compass, place it close to a bar magnet, and note the direction that the compass is pointing. Move the compass, 
and repeat. After drawing a series of lines, you may be able to plot the shape and direction of the magnetic field. The diagram on the left illustrates this more clearly. We may also use metal filings, iron filings specifically, uh, to plot the shape of the magnetic field. However, they can tell us nothing about directionality. The Earth itself has a magnetic field. This is caused by the magnetic material of the core. The Earth has an iron core and compasses the needle of a compass will point in the direction of the Earth's magnetic field. What is interesting about this is that the movement of the compass provides evidence that the Earth's core is magnetic. Without a magnetic core, there would be no magnetic field around the Earth and therefore a compass would not be affected. Since the compass is affected, Therefore, there is a magnetic field, and therefore, the Earth's core must be magnetic. What's interesting to note is that if the Earth is a magnet, or behaves like one, that North Pole, the geographic North Pole of the Earth, is actually a magnetic south and the south pole of the Earth is a magnetic north. Again, the behaviour of the compass is proof of this because the compass needle points to geographic north and we know that field lines must run on a magnet from north to south. Since the field lines point to the geographic north, it must therefore, excuse my drawing, be a south pole. Have a go now at some demonstration questions and when you're ready, move on to the next slide to look at the mark scheme. So explain what is meant by the statement, a non-contact force acts as an, on each magnet. And for part B, describe how we will plot the magnetic field pattern of a bar magnet. And here are your answers. So in part A, the magnets are not touching but each experience is a force. In part B, to plot the field, we place a compass near the north or south pole of a magnet and mark the direction it points. Move the compass around the bar magnet, marking at regular intervals the direction on which the compass points. Join the points up and add arrow pointing from the north pole to the south pole. If you like, complete RAG123 for the work in today's lesson, assessing the volume and understanding. Thank you all for your attention and as always, please remember to check out our other revision channels on Teams, Century and Seneca.